Hi everyone. The topic of my presentation today is high efficiency, high power density CLLC resonant converter with low strain capacitance and a wild heat dissipated planar transformer for EV onboard charger. My name is Zheng Da Zhang, a newly graduated PhD student from Arizona State University, and my advisor is Professor Qin Lei. First is the overview of power electronics converters in EVs. So this picture shows the structure of an EV. So in EV, there are mainly three power electronics converters. So the first one is called the power electronics controller, which is also called the traction converter, which is used to convert the DC voltage from battery pack to the AC voltage to drive the motor. So typically, the single stage two level three phase inverter is the most popular topology because of the simple and robust structure. So this picture shows uh, a commercial EV traction inverter. The second power electronics converter in an EV is uh, the onboard charger. So basically, an onboard charger is to convert the AC voltage from the outlet to the DC voltage to charge the battery. So typically, uh, the two-stage uh, structure is used. So the first stage is a PFC stage, which is used to do the power factor correction, uh, which is used uh, to meet the grade code. And the second stage is the isolated DC-DC stage, uh, which is implies to meet the safety regulations. And this picture is the commercial uh, EV onboard charger. The third power electronics converter is the DC-DC converter, which is used to convert the high voltage from the battery pack to the low voltage to power the auxiliary devices in cars, for example, uh, the audios and LEDs in cars. Because of the high voltage conversion ratio, a transformer is typically used. Meanwhile, to improve the efficiency, the synchronous rectifier is used uh, uh, instead of using the, the diode. So this picture is a commercial DC-DC converter. The Department of Energy sets very aggressive power density targets by the year of 2025. So for traction inverters, the targeted power density is 100 kilowatts per liter. And for onboard charger and DC-DC converters, the power density requirement is more than 4.6 kilowatts per liter. So you can see the major challenge in EV power electronics uh, is uh, the improvement of power density. The next question is how to improve the power density of the power electronics converter. So the first approach is to improve the operation frequency of the converters. In that way, we can reduce the size of passive components. And the second approach is to improve the efficiency of the converters. In that way, we can reduce the size of heat sinks. And there are also other approaches, such as advanced packaging, which is not in the scope of this study. Next uh, is a specific approach to improve the power density, which is uh, using the PCB-based magnetics. So this picture is the Infinix 3 kilowatts LLC resonant converter with least wire transformer. And this picture is the ASU's designed 3.3 kilowatt CLLC resonant converter with PCB-based transformer. So we can see due to uh, the low profile of the PCB-based transformer, the power density is improved by almost four times. The benefits of the planar transformers are summarized here, which include low profile, low AC winding loss, both low skin and low proximity effects due to the very thin PCB winding and very few turns. And also it has fixed and controllable parasitics, including the magnetizing inductance, leakage inductance, and speed capacitance. And it is also lab less labor intensive, so it is good for mass production, and it is very suitable for high frequency operation. However, there are also major challenges for the PCB-based transformers. The first challenge is the high winding strain capacitance, both intra-winding capacitance and inter-winding capacitance due to the flat winding structure. So the definition of intra-winding capacitance is the strain capacitance among different turns in one winding, and the definition of inter-winding capacitance is the strain capacitance among different windings. 
So both intrawinding and interwinding capacities will affect the efficiency and the power density of the system. Meanwhile, the thermal management is also a challenge due to the high current density for the PC windings. Next, let's look at the impact of the winding strain capacitance. So this picture shows a lambda capacitance model for two terminal transformers. First, for the intro winding capacitance, we can see during the daytime for a CLLC resonant converter, the intro winding capacitance will be in parallel with the a device junction capacitance. So the intro winding capacitance consumes magnetizing current during the that time, which will affect the soft switching and the decrease of system efficiency. Next is the impact of the interwinding capacitance. So this figure shows the coupled current path in a CRLC resonant converter. So we can see uh, the interwinding capacitance is basically a major path for the common current. So the interwinding capacitance increases the common current, which will increase the EMA filter size and decrease the system power density. The impact uh, from the winding strain capacitance is more significant for WBG wideband gap devices due to the small junction capacitance and the very high DVDT. Next, let's do investigation of low strain capacitance winding structure. So the capacitance between two conductors can be written in this equation. If the electric field is evenly distributed, it can be simplified to this uh, uh, equation, and the definitions of the parameters are summarized here. So the principles for reducing winding strain capacitance include minimizing the electric field, reducing the overlapping area, and increase the distance between the two conductors. So in that way, we have four candidates uh, for the optimal winding structure. So the first candidate uh, is the conventional interleaved structure. So this structure basically has a high interwinding cap and a low intrawinding cap. Because we can see the primary winding and secondary winding, they are overlapped very well, but uh, the distance is very small. So the interwinding cap is very high. And the second uh, candidate is the split turn non-interleaved structure. So we can see, although the primary winding, they are not interleaved uh, turn by turn, uh, but uh, because of P11 and P12, they are paralleled, so there is uh, no uh, electric field between each other. So the interwinding capacitance is kept low, at, uh, kept low in theory. And for interwinding cap, because of the long distance, so the interwinding cap is low for this reason. And for candidate C, the split turn interleaved misaligned structure, Basically, we must misalign the primary and secondary turns, so the interwinding cap is reduced because of the smaller overlapping area. And for the last candidate, we can see uh, the primary winding, they are uh, placed horizontally, and uh, secondary winding, they are uh, placed horizontally as well. So the interwinding capacity is low because the distance between them is large. And for the interwinding cap, because uh, they are paralleled, uh, they are paralleled. The overlapping area is uh, the the height of the winding, which is significantly smaller than the width of the winding. So the interwinding cap is also reduced as well. However, the sacrifice for this winding structure is on the footprint. So the footprint area is enlarged. But uh, this footprint area can be reduced thanks to the better thermal dissipation because we only use out layer of the PCB windings. So the winding width can be reduced. So our conclusion is uh, both the B, C, and D structures, they have low interwinding cap, low interwinding cap in theory, but uh, we need to do some certain uh, compromise in loss, leakage inductance, as well as in the footprint. Next is the trade-off analysis for different winding structures. So we conducted the electromagnetics FEA for uh, four structures. The results is summarized in this table. So case A is set as a reference. So we can see case D has the lowest winding strain capacitance, both for intrawinding cap and interwinding cap. Case D also has the least compromise of the AC winding loss, which is only 13% more, uh, 13 more compared with uh, the reference case. However, KSD has the most compromise of the leakage inductance as well as uh, the footprint. 
However, case D has the best trade-off for high volt second and low current and variable frequency operation scenario, which is exactly the scenario for EV on volt charger. So because uh, the, the volt second is high, so magnetic core footprint is dominated, so the sacrifice on the winding footprint may not be a problem. And meanwhile, due to the variable frequency operation, the required uh, magne uh, resonant inductance is typically high. So the, in uh, the leakage inductance can be used as part of the resonant inductor. So it is not a problem at all. So the keys for low street capacitance and low winding structures are summarized here. First, we need to do uh, no over uh, vertical overlapping among turns of each winding. In that way, we can reduce the intra winding count. And we need to do a good vertical overlapping uh, of primary and secondary winding in order to uh, reduce the, the leakage inductance and reduce uh, the AC winding losses. Next, we need to rot uh, on the out layer of the PCB. So we actually increase the distance between primary and secondary winding so we can reduce the inter winding cap. So the bonus for this structure is uh, the good heat dissipation. So this figure shows the proposed planar matrix transformer structure. So the key ca uh, characteristics are summarized here. It should be mentioned that here we have the high core area by winding area ratio, which is uh, due to uh, the matrix transformer structure. So the matrix transformer is an array of elemental transformer interwired to form a single transformer. Because of uh, very less turns for each unit core or pillar, the insulation space is reduced and uh, the winding DCR is reduced as well, as well as uh, the proximity effect. The key benefits include the low interwinding cap, the low winding loss, and uh, low interwinding cap, and good heat dissipation, and high filling factor and reduced footprint. In summary, we will have low street capacity good heat dissipation with little compromise of the winding loss for this structure. Next, we employ the proposed transformer in a 6.6 .6 kilowatt CLLC resonant converter. The selected topology is shown here. We use uh, the CRLC resonant converter uh, in a two-stage uh, two EV on board charger. So the first stage is a PFC, and we employ the variable dislink strategy, which is used to reduce the CRLC re regulation range and improve the system efficiency. Although the efficiency for the PFC stage may be compromised a little bit, but the overall efficiency for the system is significantly improved. For the CLLC resonant converter, it can achieve full load range soft switching for both power flow directions. So this is our prototype. The key parameters are summarized here. It should be mentioned that to compromise the double line frequency of auto ripple from the PFC disk link, we still need to do a small range of the frequency regulation to compensate the double line frequency of auto ripple. Next is the demonstration of our prototype. This is our designed prototype for the 6.6 .6 kW CLLC resonant converter. So this part is the primary side. For the primary side, we use a sitting copy device from Korea. And this part is uh, the planar matrix transformer, which employs the proposed low winding street capacitance structure. And this part is the resonant tank. So we can see this is the resonant inductor and this is the resonant capacitor. And this part is the secondary side. For the secondary side, we use Gallium nitride devices from GAN systems. So the whole prototype has very high power density as 114 watts per cubic inch. Next is our validation part. First, we validate the low street capacitance benefit. So we do the open circuit impedance measurement of the conventional interleaved winding transformer, as well as uh, for our uh, proposed planar matrix transformer. So we can see the resonance frequency is between the magnetizing inductance and the total winding capacitance. So because the magnetizing inductance is kept the same, the total winding strip capacitance is cut off by almost four, four times. Next is the validation for the good heat dissipation. 
So we conducted the full load test for both conventional interleaved winding tra uh, trans uh, transformer winding structure, as well as for our proposed planar matrix transformer structure. And the winding width uh, is actually even smaller than the conventional one. So we can see the half spot temperature is reduced by 13.3 degrees C, even with a 60% higher current density. Next is the validation for the soft switching and waveform quality. First one is the grade two vehicle uh, reduction. So we can see we will have a ZBS turn on for both primary and secondary. So the soft switching is achieved for both primary and secondary side. The, accelera uh, the acceleration between uh, the resonant inductance and the winding straight capacitance is very insignificant. Meanwhile, we also conduct the test in the vehicle to grade uh, direction. So we can see for both primary and secondary side, we achieve ZBS. And uh, the oscillation between the resonant inductance and winding straight capacitance is very insignificant as well. We also measure the efficiency and uh, compare with the state of art works. So we can see the green curve is uh, our work. This work will have a higher efficiency compared with the state of art works. So which validates uh, the high efficiency and high power density property of this design. This power density uh, of this work reaches uh, the outstanding 114 watts per cubic inch. Thank you very much. That's all I have. For more information, please check out our article, High Efficiency, High Power Density CRLC Resident Converter with Low Street Capacitance and Well Heat Dissipated Planar Transformer for EV on Charger in IEEE Transactions on Power Electronics. Thanks again.